Okay, you're live. You ready? Yep. Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody tonight to a special uh, town board meeting we're having regarding a comprehensive master plan update. Before we get started, can we all just rise and do the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay, all together now. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Okay, listen, I'm uh, I'm George Myers, the town supervisor. We have with us tonight our uh, town board. We have uh, Steve Moreau, Andrew Riegenbaum, Stephen Bedetti, and Sylvia Santiago. We also have our town clerk here with us tonight and our town attorney, Dave Zagon. Uh, before I open it up, I'd just like to acknowledge some work that was done by some of our employees and some of our residents to get this uh, plan to where we can present it tonight. And uh, Kristen O'Donnell from Lank and Tully was our outside consultant. We had Jerry Arginio, our planning board chairman. We had John McDonald, chief of information technology officer. Mike Weeks, our engineer. Uh, we had uh, Steve Moreau, uh, Stephen Bedetti, Jennifer Gallagher, which is our head of our town building department. And we had a so residents, Ron Eaton, Dominic Lucera, and Richard Asta. I'd just like to thank them for participating. So we're gonna have two public hearings tonight. One will be an update to the comprehensive master plan, and one will be an amendment to chapter 300 of the town code of the town of the winds, which is the zoning code, an amendment to the zoning map. So there's a little bit of a, we have to cover a little few things tonight. So I think we're gonna begin by having our town attorney, Dave Zagon, make a uh, a presentation. And then after that, we'll go into some comments from anybody who wants to comment. And the town board will take the comments and read them and analyze them and, and make a decision in April. It'll be probably be discussed at the workshop meeting on April 5th, town board members. Uh, people certainly can listen into that. There's no comment period at the workshop, but that'll be a chance for the town board members after they digest the uh, comments that we'll receive tonight. And uh, they will speak to, we have received some emails today that will be made part of the record. So with that being said, I think we'll move forward, Mr. Zagon. Okay. Everybody can hear me, George, you can hear me? Yes, sir. All right, give me one sec. Let me okay. see if uh, this works in terms of my sharing my screen. Okay. Now we'll blame it on John McDonald. Exactly. Oh, we're not. Good idea. How are you turning right. stuff together anyway? Okay. John, can you confirm for me? Can we see it? Yes, you can. All, screen. All right. Here we go. All right. So uh, I thought a good place to start uh, would be with a quick uh, review of exactly why it is that the town uh, embarked upon the process of revising the comprehensive plan. So the town board uh, took up the issue in earnest in January of 2020, immediately after Supervisor Myers and two town board members uh, took office, two new town board members. Uh, they were uh, all elected in November of 2019 and one of the main issues in that election uh, concerned um, the overall level of development uh, in the town. By the time uh, the new year uh, rolled around, um, 2020, uh, the entire board recognized that this was an issue that needed to be addressed uh, in addition to numerous other issues like uh, aging and overtaxed sewer and water infrastructure that would be needed to continue reliable service to existing and new town residents and businesses, the contamination of the town's relatively new ground water source, the Butterhill Wells with PFOA and PFOS, traffic uh, that many felt uh, only seemed to be increasing with all the new development in and around town, and uh, the degradation of numerous roadways in town. They further recognized that the town's comprehensive plan had not been reviewed or updated since 2009 and decided this was a good time to do so. 
updating the plan uh, should, it was hoped, uh, provide the guidance needed for the town to move forward with these and other issues for years to come. So in February of 2020, they passed a local law that imposed a temporary moratorium on all development in town. They then hired a land use planner and put together a volunteer committee consisting of local employees, officials, and consultants, and a number of town residents as well, all of whom would take the next few months to review the prior plan, determine what was working and what wasn't, and develop a set of recommendations that would be used to update the plan. And Supervisor, Supervisor Myers just told you uh, who those uh, folks were uh, that were uh, put onto the, uh, the committee. Tonight's public hearings are being held to discuss the results of the committee's work, specifically the draft of the updated comprehensive plan and the local law that would put into effect certain recommendations set out in the plan. So the proposed plan sets out over 60 recommendations regarding numerous issues, including but not limited to residential development, economic development, natural resources, and land use and zoning. I'm not going to review all of them here tonight, but I will touch on a few that I believe to be uh, some of the most important. If I don't address an issue mentioned in the plan or an issue not mentioned in the plan and somebody watching or listening thinks uh, that it's an important issue and would like to uh, either ask a question or make a comment with regard to it, please uh, let the board know uh, and you will be heard uh, when I'm done. The plan breaks down the recommendations made into those that are meant to be addressed immediately after adoption of the plan and those that can wait. Those recommendations identified as immediate mean just that. The board should take immediate action and that's why the board has already introduced the local law, which is the subject of the other public hearing being held tonight. That local law proposes changes to uh, zoning code consistent with the recommendations identified as immediate in the proposed plan. When I am done, if anyone has any comments regarding the local law or comments regarding the comprehensive plan update, they can and should speak to those comments. In addition to the recommendations identified as immediate, there are numerous recommendations identified as short-term priorities, others identified as long-term priorities, and others identified uh, to undergo ongoing review. Those identified as short-term are, are meant to occur within approximately two years after the plan is adopted, and those identified as long-term are meant to be acted on within five years after adoption of the plan. Those identified as ongoing, I think are pretty self-explanatory. The plan also identifies just who should be responsible for implementing the recommendations, whether it be the town board, the planning board, or some other uh, agency uh, or uh, a government entity like the DEC uh, or the county, for example. Some of the more notable recommendations identified as immediate in the plan are incorporated in the proposed local law to amend the zoning code, and they are as follows. Uh, for one, there's a new provision that gives the building department and the planning board more control over the clear cutting of trees. Uh, number two, uh, the stated purpose of limited commercial districts is clarified so that it is now clear that the permitted uses of land in a limited commercial district should encourage a greater range of uses than what is permitted in a neighborhood commercial district, but nothing as intensive as that allowed in a highway commercial district. Uh, a third thing uh, identified as an immediate um, uh, requirement that needs to be changed 
uh, in the in the zoning code is uh, the term incidental is uh, defined so that it is now clear uh, exactly what is intended when that term is referenced in the code. Uh, another thing, uh, there are a number of changes made to the zoning of particular parcels of land. The main purpose of which was to bring them more in line with uh, the zoning of other parcels in the immediate vicinity. Um, the effect uh, of doing so should also uh, help with concerns that the board had with regard to traffic, water, and sewer flow. There was also a concerted effort to revise the zoning bulk tables in order to encourage and support the development of new and existing agribusiness, allowing accessory and expanded use of existing farms to ensure their long-term viability. And uh, lastly, uh, in terms of the immediate actions that I'm gonna touch upon anyway, um, there uh, is was an effort to encourage more development uh, going on in and around uh, the area of Stewart International Airport. Uh, and so the number the committee, excuse me, recommended a number of revisions to uh, the zoning in that area. Uh, in doing so, uh, specifically now with regard to those uh, recommended revisions to the code uh, for the area around Stewart Airport, they tried to ensure uh, and encourage development that won't put at risk any natural resources that are there. So, for example, uh, all heavy industrial uses like recycling plants and new industrial manufacturing would no longer be permitted in this area. Such uses will only be permitted now uh, should this pass in the planned industrial zone. Uh, other permitted uses and bulk requirements, uh, again, in that area uh, of the airport were reviewed and changed to allow for more flexibility uh, and encourage more desirable economic development in that area. And medical offices, ambulatory services, eating and drinking establishments, and warehouses and distribution fulfillment centers were added as permitted uses or uses by right in that area. In addition to the recommendations uh, to be addressed in the near term, there are numerous others to be considered in the years to come. On the environmental front, for example, this plan talks about the adoption of aquifer protection regulations, the strengthening of existing watershed protection overlay zones, the adoption of additional environmental protection laws that pay particular attention to streams, creeks, and other water bodies in town and ways uh, to preserve open space as well. As I noted earlier in the presentation, there are many more recommendations that I'm not going to discuss here tonight, but if anyone has any questions about one of the recommendations they have seen in their review of the plan or something that hasn't been addressed in the plan that they think should be addressed in the plan, I would encourage you to speak up and let us know here tonight. The board has reviewed the plan and some of the members even participated in the drafting of the plan. So this would be uh, the perfect time to ask. If for any reason, we don't know the answer to your question, we will take your name and contact information and we will try to get back to you uh, as soon as we possibly can with an answer. And if you don't know uh, what to say or you just don't wanna speak in public, uh, the email address for comments on the plan and on the local law imposing the zoning amendments recommended by the plan will remain active and we will be checking for further comments for the next 10 days after this hearing is closed tonight. Uh, as the supervisor mentioned, uh, no vote will be taken uh, with regard to any action being taken on the plan or the local law uh, imposing the amendments uh, to the code uh, recommended by the plan until the April town board meeting. Uh, and all your comments uh, that come in between now and uh, 10 days out, as I said, uh, will be made part of the record. Lastly, uh, before I close uh, and uh, the supervisor opens up the floor for public comment, I want to acknowledge 
uh, as again, the supervisor uh, mentioned earlier, uh, a number of comments that the town has received thus far. Um, so on March 8th, uh, we received a letter from Choice Films asking uh, that the updated plan allow for uh, production studios and offices to be permitted as of right in neighborhood commercial zones, specifically in reference to the area along the southeast corner of New Windsor, running along uh, Route 9W up to the border with the city of Newburgh. Uh, on March 8th, uh, we uh, received a letter from the Orange County Director of Tourism and Film in support of Choice Films request. And today, um, on March 10th, we received another letter of support for this request from representatives in the city of Newburgh. On March 9th, we received a letter from Joseph Menuda requesting consideration of his request that the zoning of property located at 630 Union Avenue in New Windsor be changed from R4 to uh, Highway Commercial uh, to bring it in line with other properties that either he or his company, Freedom Road Development, own in that same area. Uh, on March 9th, we received an email from town resident William Istone advising of his support for the proposed zoning change of property bounded on uh, or by, excuse me, Route 207, uh, Tolman Road and Station Road from Office and Light Industrial to R1. Uh, these letters, uh, excuse me, uh, on March 4th, I should say, uh, we also received uh, two letters from the Orange County Department of Planning, uh, one in reference to their review of the town's proposed comprehensive plan and the other uh, in reference to the proposed local law to enact uh, changes to the town code codifying the more immediate changes recommended in the plan. Each letter uh, received from the Orange County Department of Planning recommends uh, local determination as to the actions being proposed. Uh, I would note in particular that the county's comments concerning the draft plan in particular commended the town for pursuing increased regulations and coordination with state agencies for the protection and reduction of demand on water and sewer resources. If you'll recall, both of these issues were raised as rationale for imposing the moratorium in the first place. So it's nice to see some recognition of the efforts made in that regard. And lastly, uh, in terms of correspondence received prior to uh, this or these public hearings here tonight, uh, I would note that uh, this afternoon um, we received uh, a letter from uh, White, Osterman and Hannah on behalf of uh, their clients, uh, Zygmunt Brock and Stuart Hill LLC, um, who is the uh, developer of the Stuart Hill Industrial Park project. Um, and um, they uh, oppose uh, and would like the board to know uh, that they oppose the proposed revision uh, or amendment uh, of the uh, zoning uh, along the area of Route 207 to the west and opposite of 747 from Office and Light Industrial to R1. So their uh, letter will be, um, and all of these letters will be made a part of the record and provided to the board for their review. Uh, this would uh, also be a good time to mention that the town did make the plan update um, and the local law uh, to enact the zoning changes recommended in the plan update available to the public for their review in anticipation of these public hearings, um, both immediately, uh, well, immediately before and after the last town board meeting in February. A dedicated email address, which uh, hopefully you all can all see on the screen, master plan committee at New Windsor dash ny.gov uh, was created to receive those public comments. And that email address, as I mentioned just before, will remain active for uh, another 10 days after the hearings are closed this evening. Um, so if that said, I'll turn it back to uh, Supervisor Myers to open up the floor to see uh, what, if any comments anyone has to make. Okay, David, that was very comprehensive on the comprehensive plan. Um, <laughs> All those, as you mentioned, all the emails and letters will be made part of this record and they have all been forwarded 
to the town board members so they will have them when we meet to discuss whatever comments come in tonight, these correspondence will also be included. So at that point, we'll open it up to comments. And um, I'll just ask that you state your name for the record and where you're from. So we have it on the record. So we, we will, John, do we know who wants to comment? We do, and if you want to comment, if you just enter your name in chat, we'll call you so you know we don't have people talking over each other. We have Susie Son. Would like to make a comment? Go okay, ahead. Susie. Susie Sean. Yes. Hi. 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 I'm here. Thank you. My name is Susie Son. I'm an attorney at Lucy Shapiro Frank and Barone, and I'm here to comment on behalf of Jay Myro, who is a partner at the firm. Supervisor Myers and town board members. I represent Stowaway Self Storage 7 LLC and Tolman Road Associates LLC. Stowaway owns the existing self storage facility on Route 207 and Tolman Road. Tolman owns a parcel of vacant land on Tolman Road adjoining the Stowaway facility. Both properties are in the town OLI district. This letter is written on behalf of my clients in opposition to the 2020 draft Town of New Windsor Comprehensive Plan update as it pertains to the proposed rezoning of my client's properties from OLI district to R1 district. As set forth herein, the legitimacy of the comprehensive plan update process is irretrievably compromised, and the proposed plan fails to set forth any rational basis for changing the zoning designations for my client's properties. In reviewing the proposed plan, the first thing I noticed was that one of the persons appointed to the plan advisory committee was Ron Eaton. Mr. Eaton owns property at 532 Tolman Road, which is in the immediate vicinity of Tolman's property. His property is also in the vicinity of property owned by Rock, Ta Rock Tavern Village LP that previously received site plan approval for an industrial park. To say that Mr. Eaton is a vocal opponent to any development of properties near his for uses permitted in the OLI district is an understatement. He's opposed applications by Stowaway, Rock Tavern, in front of the town ZBA, in front of the town PB. Um, he is currently a party petitioner in the Article 78 proceeding challenging the planning board approval of the Rock Tavern site plan. Based on Mr. Eaton's statements in the public record, it is readily apparent that is, it is his goal to prevent any commercial or industrial development of the OLI zone properties in the vicinity of his home. It is clear that Mr. Eaton has a personal interest in the outcome of the comprehensive plan update and any subsequent rezonings. It is inconceivable that he would be permitted to participate as a member of the plan advisory committee when such a participation is a blatant conflict of interest. One needs to look no further than to Mr. Eaton's own words as proof of his conflict. In his affidavit submitted to the court as one of the petitioners against the Rock, Rock Tavern project, Mr. Eaton stated, quote, like other petitioners, I will distinctly and adversely, I, I will be distinctly and adversely affected by the proposed development, end quote. In his letter to the planning board dated 12-8-2018 regarding the Rock, Rock Tavern project, Mr. Eaton asked the following. Does any person on the planning board own section block and lots between Tolman Road and Station Road, which is being proposed for development? If so, such person should be immediately recused from the board since that person has a demonstrable conflict of interest. Such person should have no voting rights or voice or influence on the board in this matter. It is one thing for the town board to fail to recognize Mr. Eaton's conflicted position. However, it is inexcusable that Mr. Eaton would ignore for himself the standard which he expects from others. There is no cure. There is no cure for the taint on the proposed plan caused by Mr. Eaton's participation on the advisory board. Any decision to rezone the OLA properties to R1 will be seen as an exercise in self-interest without regard to the public good. As to the lack of rationale for the proposed rezoning, the action being undertaken by the town board is an update to the 2009 town comprehensive plan. As such, the current review is to build upon the plan by proposing corrective actions based on circ circumstances occurring since 2009. The proposed plan contains no analysis as to why the OLI zoning designation should now be abandoned for a residential development. The recommendation to rezone made in the proposed plan is conclusory and is inconsistent with the term of the 2009 comprehensive plan. On behalf of my clients, I urge the town board to reject the rezoning recommendation in the proposed plan. 
The purpose of the comprehensive plan update is to provide recommendations for the good of the town as a whole, not for just one person. I expect the town board will act by removing Mr. Eaton from the advisory committee pursuant to the town code of ethics and will adhere to relevant facts and circumstances in further consideration of the proposed plan. Thank you. Okay, Susie, thank you. John, who's next? Anybody else want to speak? Enter your name in the chat, please. You want to speak? Enter your name in the chat. Somebody's raising their hand. I don't know. I can't see. I that. tried to, but I don't know if it works. John O'Malley, you can go ahead, please. John O'Malley, you're on. Okay, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, to everybody who's here, thank you to the uh, committee that was. Little, on the John, call. John, we're a little hard hearing you. Can you get your microphone closer? Got that? Okay. Stand by. No. Let me see if I. Not getting it. Hang on. Would it be its computer has to get closer to it, John, or what? You're, you're muffled, John. Right. We can't hear you. Um, John, you were muffled no, in the beginning. Now I can't hear you. No, you're good. You're good. Are you good? Oh, okay. Now I'm good. All right. Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, <clears throat> thank you to the committee and, uh, thank you supervisor and, uh, David for the presentation. Um, <clears throat> when it I, I didn't realize that there was actually 2 different public hearings. So I'm going to try and speak on just the comprehensive plan now. And then maybe I'll speak on the zoning afterwards, if that's okay. As far as I can tell, I looked through the 2009 comprehensive plan. Uh, report and I looked through this recent 1 and it looks like. Uh, f there's a holistic plan. Oh, am I frozen? Mm -mm. You're good. Am I am I okay now? I think I was frozen. No, you're fine. Okay, sorry. Um, it seems like there's a comprehensive plan for the entire town. And, you know, looking at the map that was presented a few minutes ago, uh, looking at the one that I can see in this. In this book, you know, obviously the town has a high density area over to the east and a less dense area to the west, which is where I live. Uh, I also live in this area that. Uh, Miss Sohn was just talking about in the OLI district um, over on 207. And although I understand her point about uh, Mr. Eaton being on the committee, of course, he was one of. I don't know how many 8, 10, 12 people that were on the committee, so I'm sure that. Uh, he didn't have an outsized uh, influence on the committee, but it's really important to look at this area of of New Windsor was OLI during the 2009 change. There was also an area from Station Road over to Jackson Avenue that was OLI, and it was changed at that time. Uh, the reason it was changed is because it didn't it didn't uh, uh, it wasn't in agreement with what was there in existence. And so the OLI was changed at that time so that whatever was really there is what the zone would reflect. And so it makes sense that if we look at the OLI zone now where I live, there, there are not one building that um, complies with the OLI zone. Everything that's here is a house or a cemetery or a church or even the stowaway center is a, is a, a mini warehouse, which is not part of the OLI zone. So there's no, no building at all in this zone, which is which complies with the OLI zoning code. So there's no real reason for it to be OLI. It's not gonna knock anybody out. It's not gonna take any rights away from anybody. Nobody could put in anything that they were trying to put in as it is now. So uh, that's one point. The second point is, as I look at the map, there's only two two areas, it looks like anyway, that are OLI. It's this area out here, and the other area is right next to uh, Little Britain School. I don't know if there's anything next to Little Britain School that's OLI either. I don't think so. So it seems to me that all of the things that we're thinking about in a comprehensive plan of what we want to build and where we want to develop. I mean, in the old days, before we had Stewart Airport that we were trying to develop, a lot of the stuff that went up, little industrial things or manufacturing or trucking or stuff like that. It all went up over there by UPS and by Coke and, and, you know, over on the eastern part of town. Now that we have the airport, we have the airport zone. You know, we have this whole area that's right around the airport that should be uh, encouraged for that, that sort of development. 
none of the stuff that could be used in the OLI zone should be encouraged in the middle of a bunch of farms and houses uh, out in an agricultural area. So I appreciate the comprehensive plan as a whole. I think that uh, a lot of the development that they're talking about uh, makes a lot of sense uh, in a holistic view, not just because of the area where I live. Um, and so I appreciate it and I, and I um, support the passage of the comprehensive plan as is. Thank you. John, just as a matter of uh, interest, both public hearings are open. So if you want to speak to the zoning code now, it's up to you. I, I, I want to take a moment to look okay. at the difference uh, in between. Sorry. Okay. W. McCracken, go ahead. Mr. McCracken. Yes, I'm here. We hear you. I can you hear me now? Yes, now we hear you. Yes. Okay. My name is Bill McCracken. I am a longtime resident of New Windsor. My wife and I live on Station Road and have lived here full time since 1990. We are very fortunate to live on a property that has been in my family since 1978. First, I want to commend the town board for their decision to update the comprehensive plan. The last version was in 2009, and it is certainly time 12 years later for another update. I would like to comment on section 9 land use and zoning. Specifically on recommendation number 60, which is to change the zoning along route 207 from station road to Tolman road from office and light industrial or OLI to residential one. My wife and I wholeheartedly endorse the advisory committee's recommendation. This area along route 207 starting from Jackson Avenue was rezoned OLI many years ago, sometime in the years before 1989. Since the 1980s, this area has seen a large increase in residential development, including on Kings Road, Station Road, Tolman Road, and Bull Road. And I'm not just talking about houses being built on those roads. I'm talking about new streets built off those roads where single family residential developments were built. In that same time, there has been no OLI type development at all in this area. In fact, in the 2009 comprehensive plan, the area along route 207 from Jackson Avenue to station road was changed from OLI to residential. The remaining OLI area from station road to Tolman road is surrounded on three sides by approximately 80 residential properties, including mine, and on one side by Stewart State Forest. As a result, the remaining OLI zone is totally out of character with the rest of the area. Any light industrial office development in this area would be a major disruption to our residential neighborhood, resulting in an enormous negative impact on our quality of life and our property values. I firmly believe in 2021, after some 35 to 40 years, it makes perfect sense to change the remainder of the OLI in this area to residential. In addition, this change comports with the two, with two of the stated purposes of both the 2009 and proposed 2021 comprehensive plans. Which is, to, which is to make the zoning parcels consistent with the zoning of the surrounding properties and to recognize the significant and important differences between the eastern and western portions of the town of New Windsor. I wanna thank everybody on the advisory committee for their hard work and dedication to this, and I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. John, who's next? John Ariandez. Hi, this is John. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the, the town board for looking at this issue. Uh, and I believe uh, doing an outstanding job in, in looking out for the best interests of both the businesses and, and its citizens. Um, I will say I live at 508 Tolman Road. 
Uh, and as we look at rezoning the area from light industrial to residential, it could not make more sense to me. In, in, and I won't re repeat what Mr. McCracken said because I thought it was spot on. But also I wanna commend this board because if they're not aware of it, um, there is a huge movement in both the corporate world and in state and local, and that is on a movement called environmental, social, and governance. And as we look at the planning and what's being done here, it's really looking at the environmental impact holistically to both businesses and to citizens on these type of issues. Not only are they looking at that, but the social impact. And I think whether you knew it or not, that is a, a, an important aspect of this. And then lastly, the governance, uh, how you're zoning this, how you're regulating it um, is truly impressive and how you're putting in these zones and looking at whether things should be industrial, uh, the type industrial. And I think as we look to the future, we as a town um, 10 years from now will be much better off because of this. And I think um, we heard, I think it was Ms. Schoen said, you know, the plan that was done in 2009, and Mr. McCracken, who said that one of the plans in uh, in the 80s, things change and um, our environment has changed from 2009, uh, the needs, the water, um, the growth pattern that we will see in this area due to the impact of COVID and the migration of people to the, from the city. Um, I think what you're doing is outstanding. I totally support it. Um, and I support, you know, any businesses that certainly are looking to come here, but in the right areas. I think it's a it's a great plan that is well balanced. So I just wanted to go on record as for that and saying thank you for the for the well thought out plan. Thank you, John. I appreciate your comments. John, who's next? Mr. Bloom, attorney for Tony and Summer Glazer. Mr. Bloom. Good evening. Can you hear me, gentlemen? Yes, I got you, Dan. All right. Uh, Supervisor Myers and other members of the committee, uh, I've enjoyed listening to the presentation tonight. It, uh, it, it tells me an awful lot of effort has gone into this plan. Unfortunately, I come to this meeting this evening without that type of preparation because I was contacted by my clients, uh, Gene, uh, pardon me, Ted Doring, Theodore Doring, and, um, and his assistant, Gene Lara, to come this evening and present uh, an application to you respectfully. The nature of it would be the possibility of designating what we would might reference uh, as a corridor along Route 9W uh, leading up into the city of Newburgh and by way of special permit, permit the construction or conduct of the film industry studio business. Now, I don't know what your experience with that business is. Mine was zero until 48 hours ago. And so I did some homework. I had some conversations with people in the business, as well as my clients, of course. And what I would suggest to the board, su suggest to the committee is as if I would be permitted to introduce, uh, to make remarks about the nature of the operation of a film studio, uh, sound stages, et cetera, and the possible a uh, very positive and dramatic economic impact it would have on the local community. And to that end, I would uh, like to call, if, if she's available at this time, um, one of the two owners or founders of Choice Films. And her name is Summer Crockett Moore and her partner, Tony Glazer to make comments, not extended, to the point, just to edify the committee before making a decision as to the viability of permitting that type of, or encouraging that type of activity through special permitting. Um, if I may, Mr. Supervisor, I would like to call at this point for comments in that regard, Summer Crockett Moore. Absolutely. Summer. You're up. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for being here and allowing us to speak. Tony and I have prepared a, 
a few brief remarks, so um, we'll cover a little bit on each side. The first thing many of you might be asking yourselves is what is a soundstage? What is a qualified production facility as designated by the New York State Tax Incentive? And what I can tell you from our experience as we manage three of them now successfully in the city of Newburgh is that they are retrofitted buildings that have large square footage, that have um, sufficient infrastructure already existing for the support of making film and television. Um, the buildings that we're talking about that exist in that corridor that was mentioned by Dan are uh, several square feet, several thousand square feet each. Picture each one of them is almost like a warehouse. In the center of it, we would designate, you know, between 12 and 16,000 square feet to have zoned off um, studio walls that are soundproof. Inside those walls is where the sets would be and where the cameras would roll. Around that would be dressing rooms, hair and makeup stations, little cafe for lunch, and then um, production office space and wardrobe space for costumes and a scenic shop for painting and construction of the sets. Sure, just a, just a couple, hi, uh, my name is Tony Glazer. Thank you for your time and allowing us to, to speak with you today. I just wanted to just insert a couple of examples of that would be last year's Emmy Award winning Golden Globe uh, winning. I know this much is true. The HBO limited series starring Mark Ruffalo. Uh, they came to Umbra, New York, and they were in our stage one and stage two for eight months filming a lot of interiors. Uh, we currently have on our stage four in Newburgh, uh, Darren Aronofsky's The Whale, which is an award winning play by Samuel T. Hunter, produced by A24 starring Brendan Fraser. That entire film takes place inside an apartment building, which has been built inside of our stage four. The entire film is being shot in there. It's all happening inside under one roof. Uh, we're also thrilled to have HBO come back again this year with Woody Harrelson's The White House Plumbers, uh, starring also along uh, with uh, Justin Thoreau. And so just these three, uh, just these two production companies, uh, White House Plumbers and The Whale, have essentially booked out all three of our sound stages till the end of the year. Yeah, and when jumping off that, the fact that those three stages are booked by two productions all the way through 2022 leads us to an urgent, urgent need for more sound space immediately <laughs> because we have seven additional projects from all over the country that want to come make their projects here in the Hudson Valley. Which leads us to our, you know, envisioning of this this corridor zone, which the current buildings that Ted Doring owns that we would also manage through Choice Films. These five buildings would provide three very large uh, sound stages in two buildings, um, two additional scenic shops, two wardrobe and prop shops, several thousand square feet of production offices. And all the infrastructure is already there. It would not have to be created. It would just have to be retrofitted for immediate use in the film sector. Yeah, I also think it's important for us to, to, to emphasize that this is a small footprint, that this is not an extended footprint, but it's a substantial one. And it's one that, that I believe will provide the perfect launch for an economic multiplier in New Windsor if we were fortunate enough to get this change and, and bring this business uh, to New Windsor. Yeah, and the economic multiplier, when I hear that word, I think, well, what does that mean specifically? To us, from our experience, it means jobs, immediate jobs, good jobs. These are union jobs for locals. They have very high hourly wages. They provide pension and health. They are extremely technical and they service multiple unions that already exist locally. For example, Local 52, which are carpenters, grips, and electric. Local 161, which is all of the production office workers and coordinators. Local 817, which are the Teamster drivers of all of the production vehicles. 764, 729, 829, all the design unions, seamstresses, tailors, wardrobe designers, costume designers, set designers. Then we have the DGA, the Directors Guild of America, of which Tony and I are members, which are the directors, the assistant directors, the production managers. SAG-AFTRA, which employs hundreds of actors, background, stand-ins, um, that earn very, very good pension and health wages for entire families. All of these people are local and can be put to work immediately. Yeah, and I also want to take a moment also to to mention that one of our one of our partners in our soundstage business is PRG, who is also established in New Windsor. I believe they've also written a letter uh, on our behalf as well. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention them. One thing to mention about the jobs 
focus uh, along with what we do with managing the sound stages, along with where we're at with our production facilities with, with Choice Films, is we run a, a jobs training program called Below the Line Boot Camp, which services uh, sort of uh, underserved uh, youth, but not necessarily youth, but just people in general, and give them a ground floor level entry into jobs that would lead to unions and lead to careers that Summer just mentioned. And it's a free program. We just received our first workforce development grant uh, to that end. It's really get it's it's really sort of catered to people who have a desire and a need to be there and to learn a little bit about the distance and see where they can become a part of it. That said, it would be remiss if I didn't say, along with people who want to get into the business, there are already many professionals working in the Hudson Valley region who mostly spend their time commuting to New York City in order to work. And it would be it would make me very happy to be able to expand uh, the industry in the Hudson Valley so that those people can kill their commute uh, and, and, and make their money and spend their revenues here where they live as opposed to going out into the city. Yeah, and just finally, the last two points that we have are, you know, the number of jobs, a small production can employ 100 to 200 people for three to six months. A large production like HBO employs over 1,000 people for nine to 10 months. And maybe you're asking yourself, how does this work for me? I'm not an actor, I'm not a filmmaker. Well, if you have a business, I guarantee you that business can work in film and television. Tony mentioned PRG, which has had millions of dollars of local spend through their grip and electric equipment, their rigging gear, their camera gear, their set craft design um, you know, infrastructure. But one example I'll give you, and this is a small one, we won't talk about the lumber, the hotels, the Airbnb houses, the location fees, all of those things that work with local wardrobe. businesses, wardrobes, tailors. The one thing that I can say, which is a perfect example of how someone can pivot to the film industry is Pamela's Traveling Feast, who I'm sure you all know, she runs Pamela's on the Hudson. When during the pandemic, she, like so many other businesses, had to close their doors to be able to survive pivoted immediately to film catering. And she has catered the last three features at our stages. She is currently catering on the whale. She kept her people working and making a very good wage while also servicing the film industry. And that pivot can happen across the board with so many local yeah. businesses in New Windsor. So respectfully, this is certainly a model that's proven for us. Uh, it's worked in Newburgh. Uh, we've had tremendous success. And obviously with your permission, and in the spirit of total transparency, we come to the table to see if it's possible for us to bring this success to New Windsor in order to establish more working partners, create more jobs, and be a contributing member of that of your community as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any questions? We're here. We're always open for questions. Thank you. All right, Danny, you want to add anything to that, Danny Blue? Uh, I just want to thank them for their time. I I I don't want to delay this meeting any more than necessary. Uh, uh, Supervisor Myers, but I, if if I may, if I may just uh, call for her comments, Amanda Dana from the county. She was kind enough to offer to um, make some relevant comments to assist the board in uh, assist the committee in making its decision in this regard. So thank you, Dan, I and thank you to the Comprehensive Plan Committee. You've done a fantastic job, and I know it's not an easy one. Uh, thank you, uh, Supervisor George Myers, uh, for, for allowing uh, us to speak. And thank you to your uh, leadership team at the town of New Windsor for giving us some, some guidance and putting us in this place. Um, certainly, Summer and Tony have really summed it up. This is um, an outstanding opportunity. And I truly see the value, our county executive sees the value of, of filming in Orange County. Um, it really brings revenue back home, back to your small businesses and back to your community. And it's a fantastic, uh, a fantastic business to be in. Um, I can tell you that, you know, there are some changes going on because of COVID and some hospitality businesses shutting down. Filming thrived during COVID. They kept moving forward and we're so fortunate enough to be, uh, have these types of opportunities in Orange County. I'm in full support of, of adding that language to the NC zone, um, the uh, film uh, production studio production office uh, added to the NC zone would give that corridor such a new life. And um, now more than ever, I think we do need that. And they really want to make their home in New Windsor. And I'm hoping that the committee does take this under great consideration and uh, add that language to the NC zone. Thank you.
Okay, thank you, Amanda. Danny, anything else? I think that does it, Supervisor Myers. Thank you for the opportunity to make this presentation this evening. And, uh, and I respectfully suggest to, to the committee that uh, serious consideration be given to this um, suggestion and request. And I appreciate the time and the opportunity to make the presentation on behalf of my client and the film industry in general. I, I think it would be something wonderful for the town of New Windsor being a local person myself. Okay, Dan, thank you very much. John, anybody else? Thank you. you. Thank you. Ronnie. Ron? Where is he? Thank I, you. Okay, um, gotcha. I, I just wanted to come, respond back in part to, to Ms. Sohn's comments. You know, firstly, I didn't view it as conflict. And, and the reason was, first off, the, the, the Comprehensive Plan Committee has no authority to change any rule or any zone or any uh, bylaw in the town. That solely rests with the town board. We put together this plan as a recommendation of where we saw the town going forward. The second point is that when I wrote that letter, the question was whether or not somebody had an actual financial interest while making a decision on that board. Very distinctly different because they did have a board. And thirdly, it's a bit disingenuous for Susie to make the comments because the attorneys actually wrote in the court case that we didn't even have standing to file the Article 78. And that just because our, our properties abutted the property that was in question, that that didn't give us any rights to stop clear cutting of trees. And it didn't stop, give us any right to challenge whether or not there had been a misinterpretation of the, by, of the law or zoning laws that were on the books. So on that part, I just can't agree with her. With respect to this plan, I think the committee worked very hard trying to be fair to the entire community for the future. To look at where we were, where we were going, what we wanted, and what hurdles we faced in the next 10 years. And I think, honestly, no one member can sway the whole board. You know, you had three citizens and and we didn't always agree, but at the end, we were able to compromise and agree on. So I'm going to leave it at that. I think that, you know, I wasn't going to speak tonight because I was on that committee. But I think the committee worked hard to do the best it could for the community. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Anybody else up? Cue it up there, Johnny Boy? John O'Malley. John O'Malley, you want to come back and talk about the zoning? On the zoning, on the zoning. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. All right, so I'm looking at uh, page 51 of the comprehensive plan, in particular, the zoning area. And I just noticed that all the changes, not just the OLI changes, um, talk about the same thing. You know, the change in Beaver Dam Lake from suburban residential, um, you know, it talks about uh, having, it, having it be consistent with what's currently there, consistent with the area's surrounding zoning. In the rezoning of the vacant land on Erie and Blooming Grove Turnpike, same thing, consistent with the majority of the land on the four sides of this area. In the area that I talked about before, the Route 207, the OLI zone, to be consistent with the land south of this site and the surrounding existing residential land uses. And then, of course, on McNary as well, from R5 to R4, to be consistent with surrounding developed land to the south and the east. So, in all areas of the zoning changes that are suggested, Every one of them is really talking about, hey, let's make the zone in this area consistent with what we find here. Uh, and I think that that's a really important point, and I, and I appreciate the committee for um, recognizing that. There's also another bulleted point here that says that they would review the intended purposes of each commercial zoning district to ensure that the descriptions remain accurate and consistent with the town's objective. So, I mean, I think they really did that in a very good way, and I think that that, that objective goes back to the 2009 uh, zoning changes as well, where it says on page 62, 
the new development should be consistent with the area's existing residential character. So everywhere that everywhere that these zoning uh, changes are suggested, they're suggested not to change something or to alter what's there, but instead to just make it congruent with what's there. So uh, for that reason, I uh, support the changes to the zoning code. Thank you, John. Thank you, Johnny Boy. John Orlandez. John? Yes, hi. I just wanted to comment on the uh, Choice Films um, suggestion. And, and I wanted to just as a citizen vo voice my support for it. Um, I spend about in my company about a million dollars a year with one company just to do filming for me. Um, I do online compliance training and we use scenario based. Uh, it's a great business if we could get into Orange County. It's a low carbon footprint. It creates a lot of good paying jobs. I loved hearing about how it's introducing um, folks to uh, to the film industry and how it could create jobs. I know from my own experience how much I spend, not that I'm happy to spend a million dollars on that, but you know, maybe if we had a million dollars coming into an Orange County business, I'd be more uh, more supportive. So, you know, I'm, uh, I think this is one of those businesses when I mentioned earlier and how the zoning has been thought of good, sensible, balanced zoning that in encourages growth in our community, but balances with a lifestyle. Um, and so I just, as a citizen here, I, I don't know enough about it, but from what I heard in my own personal experience in, in the film industry, just working with, uh, spending money on it more or less than doing anything else. Um, it's a good industry and it, it employs a lot of people. And uh, I think it would be a great thing for New Windsor to be able to have uh, a business like here uh, around. So uh, I just wanted to voice support of that as a citizen. Okay, thank you, John. Anybody else, Johnny Boy? Sandra Kassam. Sandra. Sandra Kassam. She's still muted. Are you muted? Hit on mute. Put, hit on mute. Sandra, unmute yourself. You got it? This. Can you hear me now? There you go. I got you. Go ahead. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And uh, very pleased to uh, to be here at this meeting. And I want to thank um, uh, Supervisor Myers for holding the meeting. And I want to thank members of the committee that worked on this uh, plan. And in fact, members of the town board as well. And I'm here this evening representing our interests and concerns with Stewart State Forest. Uh, and um, the organization is Spark. Um, we are um, we are very concerned with development that occurs around the forest because inevitably it would affect the quality of anyone who is spending time at Stewart and how they could enjoy the open space there, which for the benefit of everyone here is almost 7,000 acres. And so I have seen nothing in this plan that in any way negatively impacts the forest. I wanna thank those who have done the plan and particularly the, um, the zoning and the planning around the forest because it is in, it, to the greatest extent possible, it is consistent with the goals of open space. And by the way, I think it's very special that the committee gave close attention to other open space areas, <clears throat> excuse me, in the town. I would like to say that open space is not a part of the plan, which in any way wastes our resources. It is, in a sense, an economic bank. It's a bank in which we can promise those who are here in the future that they will want to continue to conduct their business and to live their lives and to build their homes in the town of New Windsor. It is a forward-looking plan, and it takes into account the fact that every day and in every way, particularly with some of the warehouse projects, our open spaces, which are so vital, are being chewed up and being consumed by enormous buildings that will generate enormous amounts of heavy truck traffic 
and all the other kind of traffic that supports that. Um, we are under a tremendous amount of pressure at this time with industrial development and also with residential development in the sense that many people are moving away from the metropolitan areas and are looking for a greater quality of life for their families. So in particular, because of these times and the pressures that are out there, the uh, fashioning of this new plan is extremely timely, extremely important. And I want to say that in most respects, I completely endorse the plan and I am very happy with it. And uh, I am sure that when I go back to my organization and discuss and show the plan to them, they will also be very relieved. And so thank you for hearing my remarks. Thank you, Sandra. Anybody else? Okay, so I think that's the public comment period. So just for the town board, I'm gonna do three quick motions and then we'll be wrapping it up. Because any minute now, I'm gonna fall off the chair. We're past an hour. I only have that hour that I can concentrate. Bill and Tay motion, Town Board, Town of Windsor, close the public hearing in a matter of the proposed draft update to the Town of the Windsor's comprehensive plan. Public comment will continue to be accepted via email at Master Plan Committee at New Windsor dash New York at dash NY dot gov until 4 p.m. on March 19th, 2021. Motion? Moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. General Lentine, motion Town Board, Town of Windsor, close the public hearing in a matter of amending Chapter 300 of the Town Code of the Town of Windsor, the Zoning Code, and amendment to Zoning Map. Public comment will continue to be accepted via email at questions at newwindsor-ny.gov until 4 p.m. on March 19, 2021. Roll call. I'm sorry, motion. Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. General Lantana Motion, Town Board, Town of Windsor, adjourned the special town board meeting about 8.03. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. Okay, so the town board has all of the paperwork. We've sent you everything and kind of, I know you've been up to date on the plan itself, but you look at the comments and we'll uh, have a conversation about it on April 5th and uh, we'll move forward. Once again, I want to thank everybody who participated in putting it together. It was a monumental task, something we said that we would do right away and we did it. And David, I'd like to thank you for a wonderful presentation tonight. Okay. I'll see you all when I see you. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay, hey, Johnny boy. Oh.